Okay. And tell me, please, if you could see my presentation. Yes, yes. yes. Okay. Awesome. Um, happy to see all of you here. So um, during the previous sessions, um, I told you a lot about the observability stuff. So we checked how the metrics works, how the logging works, uh, probably just tracing left, but maybe this will be in the future sessions. Um, today, we will take some subtopic about the metrics, um, especially about the Prometheus. So as you know, the Prometheus um, sometimes cannot be scaled uh, and cannot be configured as a very persistent storage. Uh, so today we will take a look how this could be done with such product uh, as Thanos. Uh, let's take a look on the short agenda. Uh, let's spend a couple of minutes uh, to remind what is the Prometheus, what is the main architecture, and what are the actual ways how this could be scaled and how it could be persisted. And in the second part, we will take a look on the Thanos itself. Uh, what are the main features? What are the main components? Uh, how the main architecture looks like? How we can integrate it with the um, different services? How the query flow works? And uh, the last part, it will be traditionally implementation demo. So I'll demonstrate you how this could be like implemented um, and practiced. Uh, as usual, all the um, scripts and scenarios will be shared in the blog post after the session, so no worries about that. Uh, okay, so what actually is the Prometheus? So Prometheus, it's an open source system that we are, that is very fam like famous and it's used for the um, metrics collection. It's based on the uh, open TSDB, uh, like a time series database, and it stores metrics uh, like in the format timestamp and the metric metric value. So in case if you need to monitor the distributed systems, it's a great solution for you. Um, we can use the Prometheus like with the Kubernetes, and also we can use it uh, on a standard virtual machine, so it, it doesn't matter. In the same way, like we, we can use the Thanos that we will discuss later. Uh, how the main architecture looks like, just to, for, for that uh, participants who um, are not aware. So we have the Prometheus server um, that contains the like database, uh, that can collects all the metrics. We have the HTTP server that is used for the collection of the requests uh, from the different subsystems and also a uh, retrieval mechanism yeah, to get the to get the data. So this is HTTP server for the control. Uh, and this is mostly for the retrieval. Also, we have the push gateway. It's an optional component that we use in the Prometheus. So it like the Prometheus by default work, work as a scrapper. So in the configuration, we define a set of sources that Prometheus will examine from time to time to get an actual metrics like, like, like this. Yeah, we have a ser service with the um, uh, exposed metrics endpoint and the Prometheus will grab the metrics from that endpoint. But the push gateway also allow you to write the metrics to the Prometheus. In um, which cases we usually use it, like when we have some kind of short life jobs and uh, the Prometheus um, collects the metrics periodically, sometimes happens, for example, that the Prometheus uh, collects metrics every 30 seconds and our job leaves just one second. Yeah, so in that case, the push gateway, it's a great way for us. Um, you will understand why we are talking about this this component. In case it's, it's optional, but it's important because like we have the similar component in the tunnels and a different architecture based on that. Additionally, we have the alert manager that based on the metrics could uh, push some, like evaluate the metrics um by some conditions and send the alerts for the different notification channels um 
by default, but it's not a part of the Prometheus. We have Grafana. Yeah, Prometheus has its own UI for, to visualize the metrics, but um, we are not able to create a pretty dashboard. So in that case, we use the Grafana. So I think that like, that's all about the architecture and we are probably reminded what, what actually is that. Uh, what are the main actually challenges with the Prometheus? It's uh, the first one, it's actually the, the storage. Yeah, uh, Prometheus usually collects a huge amount of data and like it's very hard to um, manage the storage devices. Yeah, because sometimes happens that the Prometheus collects as many data that you have no, sp uh, no space on device left. Yeah, and uh, this could like break your system and it's it's not good. Yeah, it's a uh, one point that we will try to resolve today. Another thing it's uh, like redundancy. Yeah, so in some cases we use them like multi multi AZ or multi-regional architecture. So in that case, um, uh, like we cannot cover everything with one Prometheus server and we need to um, install the Prometheus like in each region, each availability zone. And sometimes it's not, um, it not, it's not useful because we want to get the aggregated data. Yeah, let's imagine we have one application in a different region with the same data. And we don't want like to examine each Prometheus server to get the metrics. So the aggregation of the data usually gives like more benefits. And another like problem or challenge, um, it's a lack of even driven metrics because the Prometheus work on the request model. Uh, and as I mentioned before, in some cases it could miss the metrics from the short light, uh, light jobs. So for that purposes, we can actually use the push gateway, but uh, this approach requires some some changes to your application yeah, because your application must know how to push the metrics to the Prometheus itself. But again, the workaround exists for that one. But for the first two points, not. Um, how the Prometheus could be like um, scalable? We have two ways how this could be done with the federation and with the um, storage scaling. Uh, let's start with the last ones. For the storage scaling, we can just increase the disk space uh, every time when, when we need more and more um, space for our data. Another thing is the federation. Um, actually, we will take a look on this on, on the next slide. Um, let me check probably uh, how the federation looks like, and then we will um, back to the types of the federation. Yeah, so you have some kind of Prometheus, uh, e for each environment, you have separate Prometheus server, and you have the central Prometheus that scrubs the metrics from those Prometheus servers. And after that, you could see all the metrics in the centralized way. So, but uh, this is the just one architecture of the federation. If you will uh, take a look um, on the previous slide, yeah. So we have the um, hierarchical federation and the cross service federation. So uh, in the uh, on the previous slide, we actually um, can see the. Um, hierarchical federation, but in some cases we also need cross-service server service federation. It's like, um, let's imagine that in your service you have uh, um, a multiple instances. You have multiple instances of your uh, service um, and you want to share metrics between each instance. Yeah, in some case, it, it sounds weird, but in some cases like we must, must perform that. Uh, but um, this uh, approach is like um, not so usual. So in that case, we are just looking for the hierarchical federation. Yeah, so we are good with uh, with this point. And actually, that's all about the Prometheus, what you actually need to know uh, to get started with Thanos or like to remind to yourself if you already have experience with the Prometheus.
what actually it's uh, is Thanos again it's an open source product um, that is supported by um, cloud native compute foundation so both of them like Prometheus and Thanos supported by CNCF so the Thanos it's um, like a wrapper around the Prometheus that allows you um, to aggregate the data from them multiple Prometheus servers and build a highly available um, ecosystem with Prometheus. So it allows like to um, store the data in persistent way, like a huge amount of data. In some cases you need to store um, like the periodical data for a long period of times. Yeah, for example, you want to store metrics for, um, I don't know, two last years in some cases yeah but prometheus allows just store the metrics of by default it stores metrics for the last 15 days so in that case thanos it's a way for you another thing is like the highly availability high availability yeah if the something wrong will happen with the prometheus you will lose like the temporary data from the prometheus itself because um like it's um, how it works. It stored the data, um, like metrics data in a memory. And um, like from time to time, it uh, writes the batches of, of this data um, to the, as a binary block to the open TSDB. Yeah, so um, in some cases we can lose some portion of data, but Thanos help, helps to prevent that. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, like the main main sites, but let's generalize. Like the main features are the global query view. Like as I mentioned before, we can like uh, connect the multiple Prometheus server and uh, see the aggregated data. Then uh, it's a Prometheus compatible. So, um, for example, if you use some visualization tool like Grafana that works great with the Prometheus, so it will work in the same way with the Thanos because Thanos ha has the compatible API. Uh, also, unlimited retention. So the great side of this tool that it allows you to store the data from the Prometheus to some object stores like S3 or uh, Google Cloud Storage, but in case if you use um, the on-premise infra, so you can, for example, install the mini I.O. and use it uh, as a persistent storage for your data. So in that case, you can store like data for um, a huge uh, period of time, and also you will be able to control the uh, retention and life cycle of it of this data um, on the storage side yeah for example uh, on the s3 side you can um, configure the retention policy and do not perform this on the prometheus side uh, and another great feature let me maybe do it in such way um it's down sampling and compaction so um the promit uh, the Thanos itself has ability um, like to aggregate your data, and for example, if you have um, uh, a huge amount of um, historical data, it allows you to downsample it. Like um, for example, you want to get um, not all the data, but um, like a subset from your historical data. Yeah, for example, each um, second uh, record from your data, like an example. Yeah, but uh, in some cases, for example, let's imagine you have the um, metrics data for 365 days. Yeah, but you don't want to get all of them and you want to get like the aggregated thing uh, for, for example, uh, 365 records for each day. So the Thanos allows you to perform this in a simple way. Definitely you can do this with the Prometheus itself. However, it will take um, more resources. Yeah, but uh, the Thanos will help you to do this like in easier way or with um, less amount of the resources. Uh, what are actually the main components? We have the sidecar, sidecar. so sidecar it's the container uh, or the agent that is installed together with the Prometheus and it um, 
allows you like to query the um, Prometheus data and also it uh, grabs the data that uh, is collected by the Prometheus and um, send it to uh, some persistent storage like S3 as I mentioned before. Uh, it used the storage gateway for that. So the storage gateway, it's uh, like service that standardizes the um, um, like storage interfaces yeah, and allows to control the data in your persistent storage in the same way. Yeah, so for the for the compatibility. Also, we have the compactor service. It's an optional component. So it allows you like to um, like compress your data in your persistent storage. Yeah, for example, you use the um, S in case of the S3, you can use the different um storage tiers for your data. But in case of the like bare metal or on-premise, um, and you use, for example, mini IO, it doesn't allow you to use the um, storage tiers. So in that case, the compactor is the way how you can uh, save the space on your on your storage device. Additional service, it's a ruler. Um, actually, a ruler, it's a service that, um, like in the Prometheus, we have the alert manager that um, examine the metrics from the from some Prometheus server, uh, evaluate that metrics for some rules, and then send the notifications. So the ruler it's a global service. It evaluates the serve um, like it allows you to configure the global alerting rules. Yeah, um, uh, like. Let's imagine you have the staging and production environment, and both of them has its own uh, Prometheus and uh, um, alert manager. Yeah, so the ruler will allow you uh, like to collect the data from both Prometheus servers and um, configure the rules based on the environment that you use. So I'll show you on the on the main diagram uh, that. Uh, demonstrates the architecture, I will show you more detail. But for now, just uh, remember that it is like global version of the alerts manager. Um, and one of the main components is the it's a query gateway. It's, <clears throat> for example, in the Grafana, when we connect the Prometheus, we um, put some kind of endpoint uh, that we can query. So the query gateway allows to um, generalize all the components like sidecars, uh, sidecars, storage gateways, um, and collect and like and query the data from both of them. So uh, and you can like point your visualization tools to the query gateway, not to the Prometheus or something like that. Uh, let's take a look on the um, architecture first, and you will understand how it works. Um, yeah. So uh, for example, you have some some kind of service. So take a look on, on the, uh, this part of the image. You have a Prometheus server, and together with this Prometheus server, you have a TANA sidecar. So the TANA sidecar, uh, sidecar has two components. It has a storage API, and it has the shipper. So the storage API um, takes the data, uh, persistent data from the Prometheus. Yeah, and... Um, you will be able to query this data through, through this uh, storage store API. Yeah, query the temporary data in the Prometheus memory. And also it has the shipper. So the shipper collects the persistent data from the Prometheus that the Prometheus writes on the disk and send it um, through the storage gateway. Actually, it sends it to the object storage. Yeah, or uh, in case of this diagram, it sends this directly to the object storage. Uh, so it's how the data is collected. Yes, yeah, so you can uh, query the data like directly through the store API, and also you will be able to um, get the data from the object storage. Yeah, so it's the main idea of the sidecars. So it's easy because, for example, if you use the Prometheus operator for the Kubernetes, it has the embedded support of the TANA sidecar, so you don't need to um, like 
inject your containers so everything is supported from from box when we want to get some some queries so uh, for example with api clients or with grafana so we will go through the um, tanas query and the tanas query um, expose the data from two points yeah the first point if you could see this this line it um, examines the store api and uh, returns the data directly from the Prometheus, like uh, the fresh data that is uh, still in memory. And also it uh, examines the Thanos store gateway that uh, grabs the data from the object storage. Yeah, so when you do one query, it examines the live Prometheus and it also examines the persistent storage where the historical data like, is collected. Additionally, we have the Thanos compactor, yeah, that uh, works directly uh, with the object storage and perform the down sampling and compaction of the data. Also, the Thanos compactor allows you to configure the retention. However, like uh, as I mentioned before, probably it will be easier for you to um, configure the retention uh, on the storage side. And the last one, it's a ruler. So the ruler um, use the different um, uh, has different subsystems. So it has ruler evaluation that um, examine the um, Thanos query. Yeah, so it uh, send the query to the Thanos query. Thanos query returns the data from the life Prometheus and from the storage. Then uh, it uh, evaluate this rule and check if like this um if this um rule must be must be triggered and match all the conditions and then it sends the uh, push the alerts to the alert manager and after that the alert manager will send everything um um to the notification channels so let's imagine here you you will have like a multiple services yeah so all of them will have each its own prometheus server but you will have just one entry point and this entry point it's a tanas query so you will send all the queries to the tanas query and it will return the data from the multiple prometheus servers and also it will return the historical data from the object storage uh, based on that, ruler will be able to um, evaluate the rules based on the data from the different Prometheus servers, for example, from the different microservices or from the different uh, different environments. Uh, let's uh, take a look on the uh, like comparison. Um, so Thanos with the Prometheus. Yeah, so um, advantages of the Prometheus over Thanos. So the Prometheus, like it's easier layer. And um, Thanos uh, brings some additional layer of complexity. However, um, like it also gives a lot of benefits. So if you use just a simple Prometheus, uh, you will be able to perform the real-time monitoring and also you will have the rich query language. Uh, however, like, uh, the PromQL that is used with together with the Prometheus is fully compatible with the Thanos. So this last point um, could be uh, could be omitted actually. Then if you use the Thanos over the Prometheus, so you will get the scalability and also high availability. Additionally, uh, you will resolve the resolve the problem with a long term storage. Additionally, you will have the fault tolerance and disaster recovery. So like in case uh, or if something will happen with your Prometheus, all of your data will be stored in the object storage and you will be able to query this data. And the last one that was mentioned uh, before, it's a global view and federation. So you will be able to query the data from the multiple Prometheus servers, aggregate it like, and get the... Um, uh, more valuable data and more benefits from this from this data. Uh, like how it actually looks like based on the architecture that we reviewed here, we for example can use the multiple Prometheus servers. But this is the um, in some cases it's a bad way because um, like each Prometheus will collect the um, 
data from each or each um, each target so and as you could understand like each prometheus will have like the same um, same amount of of data so it means that your storage you can multiply the size of your storage uh, by by 2 yeah uh, in that case like you will spend more costs for the storage and in case of the huge amount like um, of data uh, you will be need to manage like two additional servers and uh, add more and more memory to it in case if you use the <coughs> thanos uh, each prometheus will <coughs> sorry each prometheus will uh, use its uh, will will uh, have the side care sidecar container or sidecar agent and you will perform the queries not directly to the Prometheus, but to the to this side sidecar. Even in case the Prometheus will um, each Prometheus will collect the data from the same targets, um, you will be able to perform the duplication. Yeah, because the query component allows you to duplicate uh, duplicate the data. So, for example, both of them will uh, collect the same data, but you will see just the uh, Mm, like one occurrence of this data yeah and uh, here you will also be able to um, store uh, less data yeah because all the data will be uh, transferred to the storage gateway like they duplicated yeah and store it in the um, uh, object storage so here you will um save the you you can configure your prometheus on that side uh to store just a um, portion of the data for example for two hours yeah so the rest of the data <coughs> will be stored in the object storage yeah so you will uh, with this architecture you will save uh, the storage and you will also uh, save the costs for the for the storage uh with Thanos, we can also um, use the multi-cluster um, approach. We can we can actually implement the multi-cluster approach. If you remember, some time ago, uh, I performed the session about the Kubernetes Federation. So the Prometheus, uh, together with in combination with Thanos, it's a great way if you, for example, want uh, to collect the metrics from the multiple um, Kubernetes clusters and examine all this data in the centralized way. Yeah, so as you could see here, so each um, each cluster will um, have um, its own uh, Prometheus together with the Tana sidecar sidecar, uh, and also each of them will have uh, its own uh, Tana querier server. Uh, querier component you can uh, like join one querier from one cluster to another and for example if you will examine examine this this um, this querier it will uh, give you the data from the current cluster and also it will give you the data from this cluster yeah so in this case the Thanos query works like um, like a proxy yeah, that you can use to grab your data from the multiple Prometheus endpoints and from additionally from the um, long-term storage. So each cluster actually could have its own storage or you can combine it in the same storage. So it actually doesn't matter. And using the centralized query, yeah, you will be able to um, connect Grafana to it. And with the Grafana, you will be able to visualize metrics. So query just one endpoint and visualize metrics for the multiple clusters. So I think it's a great, um, um, great benefit from this stuff. Um, we have actually two ways how this, how the Thanos itself could be uh, connected. So I wasn't sure about um, like how the how, how to put this in the presentation, like put the information about the Thanos, like general information, and then about the integration. Um, but I think maybe it 
it's good uh, to put the general information at the beginning. So now you understand how the Thanos works. Now we can take more detailed um, to the integration integration ways. Uh, one way that we can use it's the uh, side sidecars. So just add the sidecar container or sidecar agent to the each Prometheus server. Yeah, and for example, use just one. Uh, like use the Tana's query um, component uh, on each system. And then, uh, for example, use the load balancer here. Or you can like replace the load balancer here uh, with another Tana's query. And this Tana's query will um, proxy the data from uh, underlying Tana's query, query, query components. Uh, but as I mentioned before, in some cases, um, like we have the long, uh, like short-term jobs, uh, yeah, uh, that like period of work, like it could be a couple of seconds or milliseconds, and we um, won't be able to collect the metrics from that. So in that case, we actually have the component for the for the, like receiver component in the in the Thanos. It's optional component that by default it's not included, but you can include it. Uh, in that case, uh, like you will have the Thanos receiver, and this Thanos receiver will write the data directly to the object storage. So you will push um, the data to the Prometheus. And uh, we'll use the um, such feature of the Prometheus that is called remote write. And with this remote write, you can write the data to the Thanos receiver. It's, it has the compatible API. And the Thanos receiver will bring everything to the storage bucket. After that, you can use the Thanos query server uh, component um, that will get this data, query this data from the, from the persistent storage. So it's a, like the first architecture, it's a pull architecture. Yeah, and this one, it's a push architecture that you can use. Again, you need to decide which way you will use. Um, during um, current session, we will take a look on the classic schema. Like we will use the sidecars, but the receivers also um, can solve uh, many of your problems yeah, for example, if you have the uh, live jobs, yeah, that uh, works in a short period of time. Um, actually, here is the example of the um, how the receiver could be um, uh, organized for the for the multiple multiple multi tenant tenant environment. Yeah, so uh, you will have the Prometheus and each Prometheus will write to some specific receiver. Yeah, sometimes happens that the receiver can send the data to another receiver and that receiver will send data to the object store. So you can um, uh, recursively build uh, multiple layers of the Thanos ecosystem to collect the data uh, from the underlying, underlying subsystems. Yeah, but uh, in this case here, yeah, for example, uh, the Prometheus will write the data to the Thanos receiver. And here, for example, um, where is that? And yeah, it works in the same way, actually, on, on this schema. We just mismatched. Uh, there is an another schema, but in this schema, everything works uh, like through the one receiver. Um, yeah, and the query will allow you like to get the data from from the centralized storage. So again, in this case, you collect the data from the multiple tenants, but you will be able to query all the data just with a simple query. How the um, how the query works? So the query works in such way, like um, like here is the schema that actually describes. Uh, yeah, so we send the query with the PromQL, 
uh, it goes through a couple of um, stages and after that it um, comes back comes back to you um, what are actually uh, sorry the strange thing let me maybe reload the presentation here but something wrong with, with office just a sec presentation presentation is fine but that stuff is actually annoying but, um, okay okay strange okay let's let's take a look on the presentation in such way yeah probably this this will be readable I'm not sure why it happens in such way um where is that where is that um, here we are so uh the um, promql like actually it's a prometheus query language that you use for the um, writing of the data queries um this query um uh like when you send this this query it will go to the pre-filter component uh so the pre-filter component uh like check uh the um, if your query is is correct and send it to the next stage yeah and also uh, like the pre-filter allows you like execute the conditions from from your query like to um, by by condition means like for example you want um, to collect the data like to get the data with this query from some subset of the underlying prometheus server so the pre-filter actually resolved this problem uh, another sta stage stage is the fan out um fan out allows you again to wrote the queries wrote the data yeah from the different Prometheus servers uh, based on on some labels yeah so you can put the labels on the different Prometheus servers and based on that labels you will be able also to filter out which Prometheus servers you want to arrange when all the data collected from all underlying Prometheus servers it's merged uh, to the single response and another uh, optional uh step is the duplicate so if uh, like it um, analyzes the response data and uh, removes the duplication of the data but um why i mentioned that it's optional because by default it's disabled to save the resources like save save your compute resources but you can actually enable it um like in case if you need uh, like just the unique data. Uh, let's take a look how the Thanos uh, query UI looks like. So actually we will, um, I'll show you this during the an actual demo, but um, um, like just um, to demonstrate how it looks like in general. So that's all from the theoretical part. Um, we spent almost 40 minutes for that. I hope like that uh, this basic data will be enough for you to understand how it works. But um, the demo part will help you actually um, to improve this, this understanding. Okay. Um, I prepared... Um, some uh, some set of um, installation guides that you can actually use to reproduce it on your environment. All the necessary commands uh, are included to the main make file. Uh, if you use your uh, laptop, you can use the mini cube for that. So here, all the parameters uh, for the mini cube server that I used during the demo, and here are the commands that allows you to deploy um, um, deploy uh, the um, Thanos, Thanos infra itself and also additionally deploy the um, mini IO as um, object storage and also the Prometheus operator. So we will be able 
um, to deploy the Prometheus with uh, with custom resource definitions. So I'll I'll demonstrate you how how it looks like. No worries about that. So this one for deployment of the Prometheus. So why these two commands are splitted? So here uh, we deploy the ecosystem itself, and here we just deploy the Prometheus. So for example, um, uh, we can deploy the multiple Prometheus, but we just need one ecosystem. So we don't need to deploy multiple Thanos environments and, and multiple Prometheus operators. Uh, some cleaning options and uh, the as usual, if you remember the previous session, we like to make everything uh, clear, we use the Helm files. Yeah, to deploy the multiple Helm charts. Additionally, here is presented the commands that you need to encrypt and decrypt the, the secrets. Uh, so I will provide it in the decrypted way, so no worries. And we will be need to, to use it to access the um, Grafana and um, to access the mini I.O. in case if you want to check how the data, in which format the data is stored um, in the object storage. Let's take a look uh, on the Helm file here. So we will use uh, actually two um, distributions, one from the Prometheus community and one from the from the Bitnami. So Bitnami provides the Helm chart for the Thanos and the Prometheus community provides the Helm chart from the Prometheus operator. Um, actually the Thanos itself uh, is it's pretty simple. Yeah, and it has uh, it hasn't um, its own official Helm chart, but uh, Vietnami created it for us, so we will be like able to do not um, fix the plain plain text um, manifests, uh, but we will be able to automate it through the through the Helm. So uh, the main um, main things here that we need uh, to configure like uh, it's the object storage yeah for the thanos itself so we will put the um, credentials uh, and the address of our storage like type of our endpoint so here it could be like different type like s3 gcs and etc and for each of them we have the configuration so we will create the thanos bucket uh, use this endpoint. Yeah, why we use actually S3 type here because it's compatible. So you can use the S3 type together with the Thanos itself. But um, make sure that you put the insecure here because um, um, by default, Mini IO will be uh, started with um, like self generated certificates. Uh, let's put the credentials here. And another thing that we need. Um, to put here, it's the stores. Yeah, so um, the chart automatically will add the endpoint of the um, uh, endpoint of the um, uh, storage gateway, but the side sidecars we will be need to add uh, manually in this case. However, like if you use some service discovery like um, Istio or console so the tunnels can work with with it and it will discover the um, prometheus with with the sidecars automatically but it's a simple demo so we will just hard code the um, hard code the and actual uh, addresses of of our our um, prometheus uh, then um here we will enable a couple of um, uh, couple of settings for our components. Yeah, for example, here we have a ruler. Yeah, uh, for the ruler we need to configure the actual addresses of the alerts manager that it will push. After that, we can group that alerts manager, add some additional labels, and with the ruler, we will be able uh, to configure 
um, like to which alert manager uh, this alert must be sent. Yeah, so based on the based on our um, rule configuration. So this is a standard installation of Mini IO. So don't care about this one. It's it's not so so important here. Just use it in such way. Another thing that we will use it's a Prometheus operator. So why we actually use the Prometheus operator here? Because in that case, like it's easier. Um, like it's easier to um, deploy the multiple Prometheus instances with operator itself rather than like, for example, install the multiple Helm charts. Uh, what actually we will configure here, actually the main configuration, most important configuration here, custom configuration, um, it's the configuration of the, um, just a sec, uh, configuration of the Grafana data sources. Yeah, so by default, we will uh, provide the, um, uh, you like we will use the Prometheus type of the connection. Yeah, because there is no um, specific type of, um, specific type of uh, data source for the Thanos itself. Because like it's Prometheus compatible, so you don't need to care about like they, they don't want to duplicate like the same data data source plugin, but with a, a different name. So in this case, uh, instead of the Prometheus URL, you can put the URL of your um, Thanos query component. But here you can configure um, the type of the Prometheus as a Thanos. So Grafana allows you like allows to use the Prometheus data source with a um, um, with a different uh, wrappers around the Prometheus. So beside the Thanos, we also have the um, Mimir or Cortex for that purposes. Uh, but like some of them are proprietary, but we are. Like we want to take a look on the open source products for that purpose. Yeah, so we just select that we will use the, um, like the, that our data source must be compatible with Thanos. And additionally here, we can define which uh, version of Thanos we use yeah, to improve the compatibility. However, uh, like we can omit this point, uh, yeah, because we won't uh, write, um, any kind of um, like complicated queries. So uh, the default compatibility actually will be definitely enough for us. So it's all about the uh, Helm file, file itself. Additionally, I created the Prometheus manifest. Yeah, so to do not create the Helm charts, uh, I created just the customization um, uh, templates here. So. Uh, here we have the um, configuration for the uh, for the Thanos. So if you will take a look here, yeah, um, on the Prometheus resource that we will we'll configure um, in the specs, we have the option that is called Thanos. So we can select the version of the Thanos sidecar that we will use, and also we can configure the object storage config. So in this case, we will. Um, we won't inject the settings um, for the um, settings for the sidecar uh, directly. Yeah, we will just refer it to some kind of configuration, and this configuration we will generate uh, with the with the customize itself. Why it requires the like the configuration for the S3, because as you remember, the sidecar collects the persistent data from the Prometheus and send it back like directly to the object storage. So it's why we need these credentials. Uh, the rest of the um, parameters are like standard. So we use the persistent storage um, just for case, and we uh, create some specific uh, service account. Yeah, the cluster roles, uh, cluster role bindings. So all that stuff are pretty standard. 
Uh, so I already deployed all that stuff for you, just like to reduce the time of our call um, and omit uh, some some problems. Yeah, so we have the monitoring um, namespace. In this monitoring namespace, uh, the Prometheus operator is installed together with Grafana, with uh, Minio, and also with the um, uh, all TANAS components here. So we have the query uh, here. Also, we have the ruler here, storage gateway, um, querier, um, and I think actually that's all. So uh, like all of them, like Grafana, Mini.io, additionally the TANAS querier and TANAS querier frontend here um, are exposed with the with the ser services and we can like make a port forwarding uh, like this yeah so here we forwarded the Grafana uh, to see how it looks like and how to configure the um, access to like, how to configure data source for the for the TANAS itself and here the TANAS query front end how the front end looks like, like in presentation. Yeah, so we have here like um, an actual graph. So it, it looks almost like the Prometheus UI. However, here you can use, again, you can use like the duplication that you can enable. And here you can query the um, multiple, Prometheus, uh, multiple Prometheus servers. Additionally, if you want to check which stores are um, available through your uh, through your query, Thanos query, you can go to the stores. So it recognizes that we have the uh, we have the ruler component. Additionally, we have the store. Uh, our store actually it's um, so it refers to the. Um, um it refers to the store um store component yes storage component and also uh here um, will be demonstrated all the um, all the different side uh, sidecar containers together with our prometheus so here for example we have a prometheus uh, that is placed in the production namespace yeah let's probably um make one more thing here uh let's make the let's create the so here we created everything for the for the production let's make the same stuff here but for the staging but let's create the uh, staging namespace and then let's create our prometheus Okay, in the staging. Uh, okay, some problem here. Um, let's make it in such way. Okay, here we will put a little bit of hard coding here, no worries. Mm, okay. Uh, uh huh. We need to make not the delete but apply. Okay, so the Prometheus will be deployed here. Let's put it back to the production just for case. Mm -mm -mm. Let's go to the production namespace. So here our Prometheus. Um, and actually it must be connected together with the Thanos sidecars. Just a sec. So here are the Prometheus container, config reloader, and here are the Tana sidecar. Yeah, so it runs just sidecar utility and uh, points to the local um, local Prometheus. If you will take a look on the set of the sidecars. Okay, so probably it, it might take some time actually when the um, when the Thanos will recognize it. So let's do not uh, spend the time for that. Um, probably we can actually make a hard reload, but like let's 
let's keep it as is. Um, yeah, so how, how it looks like in the, um, ah, here we are. Yeah, so now we can make a queries to the multiple Prometheus based on this label. So we just add the um, filtering by this label to our query and it will grab the data from some Prometheus address. If we um, want filter by the Prometheus name, so we can use just, we can just enable the, the duplication. Yeah, and in that case, we will uh, get just the unique data, like unique aggregated data from both Prometheus uh, servers. How the mm, data sources uh, for the TANAS uh, are configured. So we will use the um, internal URL. So we will mm, point to the TANAS query uh, component. Yeah, uh, use, uh, there is no authentication here, no TLS. Um, then we will select the Prometheus type as a Thanos, and here we will be able to select the version. Yeah, so the rest of the stuff uh, are actually works in the um, in the same way. Yeah, if we will test our uh, like that, it works absolutely fine. If we want to like make the um, make the data yeah so we can um just a sec um okay so actually there is no uh, no data collected here yeah so it means that we won't be able to um like to make any kind of uh query just to demonstrate yeah but again it works in the same way like for the single Prometheus server. But um, around that, you can uh, select the actual instances of the Prometheus that you want to, to grab, yeah, and grab the data. Or you can also like grab the data for both of them, uh, merge it and deduplicate if, if needed. That's actually how it looks like. Um, and I think that's probably all what I want to demonstrate you. Yeah, so the, um, uh, the actual uh, scenarios for the, for the deployment is pretty simple. Yeah, so if you performed um, the previous demos, so it works in the same way, but we just use um, slightly another Helm charts for that purpose. Actually, that's all from my side, just one hour. And now I will be glad to um, get your questions probably. Thank you, Ildar. But today we uh, finished the time. <laughs> uh yeah so i noticed about this like that uh, usually the sessions are pretty pretty long however like i prepared everything um, earlier so 